Well, Amega, welcome to all of you, uh, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and with us here, a uh, dear brother and a very special guest, TikTok on the Rock himself, David Wood. Of course, we miss that, and uh, hopefully, uh, his new channel and uh, whatever endeavor he is uh, exploring right now will be as successful as the previous one. Uh, today's topic, as many of you have noticed, has to do with Ramadan. And of course, if you know anything about David, he had actually a whole segment in the past called uh, Ramadan Bombathon, and we'll let him talk a little bit about that. But of course, we wanted to explore things about Ramadan from the fact that is it really a month of fasting or feasting? And hopefully we'll also coordinate uh, or, uh, you know, show correlation between the teaching in the Quran about Ramadan or in Islam in general and even under Sharia versus what our Lord taught us about Ramadan. In fact, you know, uh, the section in Matthew is extremely powerful because that was one of the things that opened my eyes to the fact that Matthew in there and the Lord in that Sermon on the Mount almost was talking about myself, me, when I used to fast. And we'll, we will address that in a little bit. David, how's it going, my friend? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, praise God. Coming back to doing live stream slowly and gradually after the surgeries and everything is going well. So how about you? Yeah, good, good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping because you know, you know, Ramadan is a is is a, almost upon us. But hoping, hoping that we don't get that that Ramadan bombathon that you mentioned. That actually, uh, uh, Glenn over at the Religion of Peace uh, for many years has been um, keeping an ongoing list of terrorist attacks um, carried out uh, since 9/11. And uh, every year we've, we, we, all, we always notice, I mean, especially uh, when we had the ISIS caliphate, that terrorist attacks spike during Ramadan. Uh, there's, 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 always a, there's always a spike right after, you know, Friday prayers, and there's a, there's a spike in terrorist attacks during Ramadan. So, yeah, we call it the Ramadan Bombathon. Uh, for, again, fortunately, after uh, ISIS started falling apart, we didn't get the same levels of violence. But, uh, you know, the rest the rest of the world, the rest of the world seems to really think that uh, when you're when anyone from any religion is in some sort of holy time or some holy month or a holy day or something like that, that you're going to be so focused on God that you don't want to go out and cause violence in the name of your religion. And these people are always confused about these terrorist attacks that happen during Ramadan. What's going on here? They don't realize, wait a minute, if your God commands you uh, to violently subjugate the world and to terrorize others, and especially if there's a special holiday where your rewards are boosted, when do you want to carry out your terrorist attack? When you're focused on your religion and focused on getting your rewards. And so we we always see this uh, this trend in violence. Again, fortunately, uh, Ramadan has not started yet. I'm hope I would love to see like the lowest levels of violence in in years, but uh, unfortunately, we just have to wait and see. That is true. I mean, in some countries, it might start on the 22nd. Others, sometimes it could start a day later, obviously, because Ramadan follows the lunar calendar. So it depends if someone can see the crescent moon and they have to go before a judge and they have to uh, sign an affidavit or swear that they have seen it as witnesses. And the end of the month is the same because it could be 29 to 30 days. But you're absolutely correct. Uh, about that. Uh, one would wonder if this is a holy month, why would the likes of ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Al-Shabaab, for instance, would actually shed blood? And if you would ask them, they'll tell you, because we are fighting for the cause of Islam, no one is practicing Islam the way it should be, and the list can go on and on and on. And they may even argue that the Prophet himself did have some campaigns during the month but mm -hmm. you know it contradict what you you know it's kind of like a contradiction if you have a holy month uh, you should at least exercise peace during that month at least pause for more and wait until that holy month is over in fact chapter 9 of the quran claims that the covenant between allah through his prophet with others who rejected islam 
will last for at least during the four holy months. And then after that, after they pass, uh, you know, these holy months, then the war uh, is an open game, technically speaking. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yep, people, uh, people, uh, people constantly view Islam through the lens of their own religion. And it just, do it just doesn't work with Islam, right? They think, they think everyone, they think everyone's the same. And the problem is politicians, journalists, everyone thinks like this, like, oh, now, now is the holy time of the year for, for Islam. And so now I, I guess there'll be a break from all the terrorist attacks and uh, nope, doesn't work like that. Diff wrong, That's true. Wrong, wrong religion to be thinking that way. So, David, you know, um, I, I know uh, Ramadan is a big deal uh, when I was in Saudi, of course. It's like everybody waits for it eagerly. And to be honest, it's the nightlife that uh, we would wait for. I mean, mm -hmm. for instance, the, if you're working uh, for a private uh, uh, entity like a bank, for instance, you only work like a couple of hours in the morning and then you pause until you break the fast and after the night prayer People go back to work and uh, the malls are really busy and it's almost like sometimes they go all the way until like two in the morning. And uh, sometimes people even hang out until almost four in the morning. They eat again, of course, called, known as Sahur, which is like the feast before you go to bed or you pray at least the first prayer. Now, uh, so things, life changes completely in, in countries like Saudi. Now, you lived, I believe, in New York. Now, did you notice anything in New York? Did you notice that uh, things change also in the Islamic community? I mean, there is a lot of people. And we have, by the way, an apostate in here that is harassing us, apostate prophet. Uh, oh, he doesn't tell respond to shut my up. calls, but he does actually follow you everywhere you go. Yeah, he he needs attention, right? Because you, because really people only, people only leave Islam for attention. You know that, right? <laughs> People, let's see, why do you Islamophobes not like Islam while a wonderful man with a pure heart like Andrew Tate became Muslim? Alhamdulillah. See what I mean? Ex-Muslims -Muslim, ex are always dying for attention. Isn't that weird? Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> in New York, they do things like, oh, we'll, we'll light up the Empire State Building for a... Uh, for uh for ramadan we'll decorate it in islam green they do that thing i think and I, I think at the end of the day maybe it's to hey please don't attack this we're lighting up for ramadan please don't blow this place up in the in the name of uh in the name of allah um but yeah i mean i mean let, let, matter of fact let me let me take you all the way back with uh uh to my first impression of uh of ramadan i mean that they, they I, we did have ramadan in in prison way back in the day um, but as far as like me seeing things firsthand, my friend, uh, Nabil, Nabil Qureshi, when we were in college, he was chronically, and I, I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've got some of this in your, your background. He was chronically like 15 minutes late, but it was always like almost exactly 15 minutes late. He called it, he called it Pakistani time, but, um, <laughs> Like whatever, whatever time you spoke, if you were supposed to be somewhere at 10, he would be there at 10, 15. It was to the point where he was so consistent with it that whenever I needed him to be somewhere, I would just say, oh, you have to be here. And then I would, I would give the time at which he needed to be here as 15 minutes earlier, knowing then he would show up correctly on time. But the, the first time he was ever right on time for, for anything was when he was breaking his fast for Ramadan. We were supposed to meet for dinner and all of a sudden it right on time, right, right. Sundown, sundown. He was right there. Like whatever it was, 5 41 PM or whatever. Like he knew when sundown was so he could be there. Um, so he, so he could break his, uh, break his fast. But, um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I, I, did a lot of fasting way back in the day. In fact, I, I mean, I started before I became, a Christian. So, so I understand. I mean, it, it has, uh, it fasting does things to you once, once all the, you know, the, all the food is out of your system and so on, it actually starts, your, your brain starts running on other things. And, uh, for me, at least I, I ended up thinking far more, uh, form far more clearly after several days of fasting. And I kept, I kept this up for, for many years. I would fast for long periods of time. Uh, the, the, the most I ever fasted was, was for 12 days. Uh, but that, that's, that was just, that was nothing but, but water. And then for several years, I would fast from, um, from sundown on Friday to sun up on Sunday. So basically the time that Jesus was in the tomb, I did that. Uh, I would fast that, that time for years again, just water. 
And um, and so when I was always hearing about you know fasting during during Ramadan, I was like, okay, that's a you know fasting. That's a that's a good practice. And then I found out, of course, what Ramadan fasting actually is. <laughs> and it's like the opposite of what everyone else in the world thinks of as fasting. Um, I mean, you, you, they, they, you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they, they, Muslims, they don't eat during the day, but then after sundown, they gorge themselves like it's like it's a Thanksgiving dinner. And then before sun up, they gorge themselves again. Like it's another, like it's a Thanksgiving meal for breakfast. And so they gorge themselves with these two meals, stuff themselves completely. And they do this for a month. And it's it's to the point where doctors are complaining about all the health problems, people getting diabetes and so on from Ramadan fasting. And uh, I was just I was just looking up I was just looking up articles on it. And there are all these like retailers who give advice to stores on how to be ready for Ramadan sales, spiking the food sales and how they can be prepared for this. Like it's Black Friday. Right. It's, it's talking about it like it's it Black, Friday. It's a Black yeah. Friday, except for 30 days. Yeah, there's this 30, 30 days of endless set food sales. Uh, food sales go through, and here, I was just reading this. Uh, but uh, so food sales spike 50 to 100% during Ramadan, um, but productivity decreases between 35 and 50%, depending on what, what, what country it is. So you're eating way more, people are eating way more but doing way less. And that's because it, here, here's what, here's what's odd. So uh, people have been following for a while. They, they kind of know my situation behind the scenes, but I have five sons. Two of them have a, um, a terminal muscle disease. Um, so I actually, there are times when we have a nurse at night. Uh, we don't have a night nurse now. So I actually stay up at night, to take care of my kids and my wife uh, takes care of them during the day and I take care of them at night. So I actually sleep a good part of the day and I stay awake at night. So for my schedule, my last meal of the day that I eat is around 5 a.m. That, that, that's just every day, right? So so I eat, you know, I eat during the evening and then my last meal is about 5 a.m. And then I'll go to sleep uh, seven, eight, sometimes a little later, something like that in the morning. And then I sleep until could be three, four in the afternoon. And so by the time I eat breakfast, it's like five or six o'clock in the evening. And so that that's not that's not quite Ramadan style because the sun is usually up then. But notice I could I could shift that just slightly to where I'm eating my I'm eating breakfast uh, after after the sun goes down. And I would, I would be, t I would be fast. That would be a Ramadan fast, right? Because no, I mean, so, so anyway, think about this. Yeah. A, a, a completely normal day for me because of the schedule I'm on is to sleep during the day, to eat during the evening. And then my last meal is like five o'clock in the morning. So mm -hmm. That's almost that's almost identical to Ramadan fasting, except you know I, I I typically eat breakfast a little before, a little before sundown. But other than that, you could tweak that slightly, and it's totally normal everyday eating for me, and that would be considered fasting in the yeah. world of Islam. And I'm thinking, wait, a, a total normal day for me? Because notice, I mean, m m most people it, it, that that schedule is flipped. They they sleep at night and then they wake up during the day, but when a person eats, during, let, let's suppose a person eats dinner uh, at six o'clock p.m. So you eat dinner at six o'clock p.m. If you don't eat breakfast until six o'clock a.m. and dinner was your last meal, then you've gone 12 hours without eating. Um, in Islam, they just reverse that schedule. So a bunch of, and, and, and unless people who actually have to go to work and their work isn't going to reschedule things for Ramadan or something like that, people who are able to generally just change their schedule. They sleep during the day. They stay up at night. And they gorge themselves twice per day, and they call it fasting. And it's just uh, it's just so amazing to me to think that my normal schedule every single day would be considered very strict Ramadan fasting in the world of Islam, even though it's just I'm not I'm not fasting at all, and it would be considered fasting in Islam. 
Absolutely. And I have to tell you, uh, you know, David, in, in my case uh, and the case of many of my friends, because, you know, there are certain restrictions of Ramadan. You know, if you get angry, somehow it's canceled, you know, or it's negated. If you uh, think you swallowed, you know, even your own saliva, you feel like, oh, man, I mean, am I fasting or not fasting? You know, or or you get a bad thought in your head and it's like, oh, is, is my fasting still okay? So you come up with the solutions like, you know what, I better sleep it off. You know, it's like eat sleep, wake up almost like ready to eat again, and yeah. I'm safe. I was asleep, and it won't count if anything bad happened during a dream. And, and that's how it becomes. And, 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 and it's so weird because during that time, uh, people have all these increased, like, like if, if, you, if, you if you just look it up, as soon as you start looking up problems associated with Ramadan, you find all these uh, like uh, 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 reports from, from doctors and so on talking about how uh, hospital visits and medical problems and so on spike during Ramadan. And then especially after Ramadan, uh, because of all that, you know, again, people get diabetes and all these other health issues because of the this binge eating, they're consuming way more than they normally do. It's like, it's like, guys, for, for, for those of you who, who don't know or talking about this, you know, if you're not familiar with Ramadan, uh, different people have different, you know, different celebrations and holidays in different parts of the world. If you're in the U.S., you, you're probably familiar with Thanksgiving. Family gets together, has a big Thanksgiving meal, but that's like one day per year. And maybe you have a big Christmas meal and maybe you have a big meal for, a, let's say, a birthday party or something like that. But it's like these things are like spread out throughout the year and they're usually like one day. Imagine having Thanksgiving dinner twice a day for a whole month. That would like that would mess you up, and to, to be fair, not all not all Muslims not all Muslims do that and so on. But this is this is reaching like epidemic levels in the Muslim world of all these health problems. So on the one hand, you have all the people who are uh, ha going through all sorts of health problems, how how it's affecting them physically because of this this binge eating, and then on the other hand, it, there are reports that um, of all these. Uh, uh, traffic problems, tra traffic accidents increase, all these, all kinds of accidents, work-related accidents for people who still have to work during Ramadan all spike because they, 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 they start eating at night and then they have these parties and so on and they, they binge eat and then they're tired the next day because they've been, they've been having this, this Ramadan feast all night long. And, uh, it's just, it, it's, it, here, here's the thing. I would have no problem whatsoever if they called this the feast of Ramadan, right? Just, just call, just add an E to the word, add an E and call it the feast of Ramadan. I have no problem. I do not care if you have a feast of Ramadan. People have feasts. My only, my only point would be, Hey, think about your health. Think about these kinds of things when you're eating for this month and, you know, maybe dial it back a little bit on the feasting. But that's not what they call it. They call it the exact opposite of what it actually is. They have a month-long feast. Food sales go through the roof. And then they, they, they walk around, oh, I'm fasting. I'm so, so, so tired and miserable because of this fasting. And it's like, you're tired because... <laughs> You're tired, like like people get tired after Thanksgiving dinner, right? You're you're loaded up with carbs and tryptophan, and you can barely walk because you're so stuffed. And calling it fasting, it's I don't know, it's so it's so weird to me. It's the weirdest thing in the world. Except you know, Thanksgiving is one day a year. Uh, Ramadan, it's you're having two meals at least, if not even more, for twenty nine or thirty days. And here's the thing: an apostate prophet was making uh, uh, you know reference to that is like you eat so much that you can't even move anymore. I mean, it's yeah. like you put on so much weight. You, if you're diabetic, uh, forget it, because there is so many variety of desserts that are offered at you in that month. It's unbelievable. And you know, you would eat, you would pray. That's your workout, by the way, praying, you know, at nighttime. Then you you go on visit and you eat more and you eat dates and you drink coffee and you drink tea and you eat dessert and you eat. And then you come back home and you eat and you go to sleep and then you wake up and you that's mm -hmm. the routine is always like this. And here's the interesting part. Again, what woke me up to reality is that again, I feel sorry for my Muslim friends. If you're watching, believe me, I mean, I'm just uh, we're talking here because we want you to realize that what you're being told is one thing. Reality is another. We get angry. We get frustrated. We are tired. Uh, we're mentally unable to focus on a lot of things because you're hungry. The, regardless of what you can eat, you're still hungry sometimes. And especially if you're working outside, imagine 
in Saudi, in Nahid, working outside. I mean, uh, th there is a lot that can happen. Yep. Uh, problem after problem after problem. And yet this is, uh, I mean, this is one of the five pillars. And ju just think about this. I mean, your, your core religious practice, your core religious practices. Uh, so those of you who aren't familiar with Islam, you have your, you have your six articles of faith. These are the most significant beliefs. If you convert to Islam, they're, they're going to give you a list of these things that you have to believe. Uh, but then you have your the five pillars of Islam, these basic Muslim practices. And fasting during Ramadan is one of these core Islamic practices. And you convert to Islam and they tell you, you're going to be fasting during the month of Ramadan. And you say, uh-oh, fasting for an entire month? Oh my goodness, that's going to be so hard. No, actually, you're going to be, uh, you're, you're going to gorge yourself with food, then, you know, hang out for a while, gorge yourself with food again, and then sleep all day. And you're going to do that for an entire month. And then you're going to spend the rest of the year trying to work off all the weight you gained. That, that's, that's, uh, that's Ramadan. It's just this, this massive weight gain celebration. <laughs> it's like, that is true. Okay, okay. I would have, I would have no problem if they called it a celebration, a feast, anything like that. It's just like, how do you call it? the exact opposite of what it actually of what it actually is and then expect the entire world to be praising you for your 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 devotion to your religion you're basically having a, a month-long party that is true and and you know you mentioned that it's one of the pillars indeed it is one of the five pillars in fact as a muslim you have to uh you know fast unless you qualify for not fasting example of that uh, someone has a surgery, maybe had illness. A female has her uh, uh, menstrual, uh, you know, basically uh, monthly, uh, you know, uh, period. Um, uh, you know, uh, things like this, you're allowed not to fast, but you have to make up uh, what you did not fast a number of days. Now, the interesting part is that if you intentionally did not fast, now you don't only make up the days that you didn't fast, but for every day, some, uh, you know, will say you have to fast two months and others will say, no, 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 you have to fast two months, consecutive month for all the days that you have missed for that particular month. But any way you look at it, it seems like there is no end in, in sight. And some people, by the way, when you do not fast because of surgery, you have to feed someone. And it depends if you're reading huffs or wash. Some will say you feed one person. Other will you say that you feed a group of people. Why? Because you can earn righteousness on account of feeding someone. It's almost like substitutionally atonement, David. Uh, come on. <laughs> there's, there's no substitutionary atonement in Islam, especially if you ignore all the passages about Muhammad saying that Allah will punish Jews and Christians for the sins of Muslims so that the Muslims can just go to paradise and get their virgins. As long as you ignore all that stuff and ignore everything else you're talking about, there is no substitutionary atonement in Islam, just so you know. I hear you. <laughs> So some some was asking and and I you know I I don't want to uh, just answer it by myself about the origin of Ramadan the name Ramadan itself the origin of the month you know the practice uh, it, probably many don't don't realize that that existed even in in pagan Arabia before Islam came into the scene would you like to elaborate a little bit on that uh, well I mean that's a uh, that, I mean it, it, the, Ramadan the word means uh, it means like it means like heat right scorching heat right, or something right. like that yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah, so it, it it referred to some sort of you know hot summer hot summertime um, uh, fasting or something like that, but in in the Quran in the Quran it says it was it was uh, ordained for those for those before you, and so uh, it 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 seems like it was some pre-Islamic um, practice like like the the Hajj the, the pilgrimage was a pre-Islamic uh, a pre-Islamic practice, um, but. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, and, and and then, of course, Muhammad was was doing something like this because that was supposedly when he's off in the cave and he gets his first revelations and so on. Um, but, yeah, it, it's basically like like. Pretty much everyone, I mean, Jews had fasting, Christians had fasting, uh, Muslims had fasting, uh, pretty much everyone under has 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 understood every religious group um, has understood the significance of fasting because it does actually affect you when you actually deprive yourself of food in order to focus on something else it does like clear up your 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 mind becomes clearer your thinking becomes 
uh, becomes altered. And so if you want to, if you want to focus on something, uh, especially, you know, your spiritual life, this is, people have just understood historically that, that fasting is a way to, to go about that. Uh, but in, in Islam, I, I don't even get it because you're not, you're, you're not doing that. You're not experiencing that. You may, you may experience during the day, especially again, if you have to still go and work and you're, and you're, uh, your boss isn't changing the schedule for Ramadan. You still have to go out and work after after binge eating all night. Um, that you know it, it may be you may be worn out from having to go to work. You can't have any water or something like that. So it may there may be difficulties associated with it. But you're not getting the benefits of fasting if you're still stuffing a bunch of food in your mouth. It doesn't affect you in the it doesn't affect you in the same way that actually you know fasting for a couple at least a couple of days uh, does. So anyway, it's just a it's it's the weirdest thing in the world to call a fast. Right. And I know, of course, uh, like you stated correctly, like the Quran makes it sound like it was ordained for previous uh, religious people uh, like uh, Christianity or, for instance, uh, Judaism or even by other prophets. But in fact, I mean, uh, other than probably the fasting for the Day of Atonement, which is probably one day, one can argue, you do not find anything instituting fasting for a whole month or it's part of the pillar uh, of practice. That means you are not a Christian or a Jew unless you do this and so on and so forth. Uh, Islam is the only religion, at least in, in according to the Abrahamic religion uh, group, that uh, makes it sound that it is mandatory and there are conditions to be followed. And if you weren't able to fast, then you have to atone for that and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. And uh, all of this, all of this brings to mind, all of this brings to mind <clears throat> what Jesus said about hypocritical religious practices, um, religious practices where you're doing it to be seen as righteous. Uh, this is this is exactly what we see in Islam. In fact, I would argue that Islam goes a step further than what what even Jesus was criticizing, because Jesus is you know Jesus is criticizing um, in in Matthew six. We can actually read it if you want, but Jesus was criticizing in Matthew six people who are fasting and want people to know that they're fasting because that would be viewed as a righteous deed. But Jesus was criticizing people who were actually fasting. They were actually genuinely fasting. But while they were fasting, they wanted people to know that they were fasting so they would be viewed as righteous. Islam takes it even a step further than that in that you're not really fasting. You're not you're not doing anything that would be biblically fasting. And yet you still want to be known as fasting as as righteous because of your fasting. And so it's a it's like it's like Islam. It's like Islam says, "Hey, everything Jesus said not to do as part of your religion, let's make a big religion out of it. Let's take everything Jesus said not to do as part of your religion and let's make an entire religion based on all the things that Jesus said not to do." That's very very interesting situation. Should we should we check that out? Should I? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Okay, so let me um uh, this is from Matthew chapter six, and this is this is right after uh, this is right after uh, the section also in Matthew six where Jesus talks about uh, hypocritical prayers. Uh, he says in in Matthew chapter six verse five, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. I mean, think about this: you have you have all these people standing in the mosque, and keep in mind you, you know, because you. There were times when Jesus prayed in front of other people. So he's not he's not condemning the idea of ever praying as part of a group or praying in front of others. Uh, it, it's it's your motive. It's the, the more public you are with your prayers, the more inclined you're going to be doing it to be seen. So in general, as a general rule, try to be on the safe side and make sure you're 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 not seen. But I mean, think about that. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. That really reminds me. I mean, no one does this more than followers of Muhammad where they actually like block streets or they go to Times Square and have this big communal prayer specifically 
to be seen by others. I mean, think there are mosques all over New York City. There are mosques all over New York City, but they'll go right into Times Square and have this uh, have this big prayer specifically so that cameras all come out and go, oh, look, look at all the look at all the Muslims who are praying. And these are people who claim to respect Jesus when Jesus is the one who said, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. In other words, if you want to be seen, then great. If you pray to be seen and you've been seen, great. That's your reward. Don't, ex don't expect anything from God uh, for your prayers. Don't expect God to care about your prayers if you're doing it to be seen. So he said he had we, we have that section on prayer. And then right after that, he has a section on fasting. And he says in, in verse 16 of chapter 6, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. M namely, don't, don't, don't expect to get any reward from God for your fasting if you're doing it to be seen by others. And he says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So do it in secret. If you're going to fast, fast in secret, not as part of some public spectacle. And yet you have this religion which claims Jesus, which claims Jesus as one of their prophets. And this, this entire religion says, hey, entire world, pay attention now because we're getting ready for our fast. Everyone in the entire world, uh, politicians, uh, journalists, everyone, everyone pay attention. Look over here. Look over here. We're fasting. Don't ignore us. We're fasting. Oh, we're fasting. Now we're praying. Now we're fasting. We're praying. Get your cameras ready. We're fasting. We're praying. And it's like, it's just so interesting to me that it's like you can read the words of Jesus and think about how you're supposed to follow his teachings. And if you went, if you just went through this and you said, let's do the exact opposite of everything Jesus is telling us to do. If you if you took that and said, okay, we're going to we're going to take everything that Jesus said, we're going to do the exact opposite and make an entire religion out of it, that religion would be Islam. That is absolutely correct. And I remember the first time I was exposed to this uh, sermon amount, uh, I um, I've been still seeking and people were sharing with me certain teachings about uh, what Jesus thought. I should say I was asking about some of his teaching. And I start to read about the prayer and about uh, fasting. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's almost like looks like criticism of what I'm doing, actually, not the other way around. And indeed, I began to reflect back. That's exactly what I used to do, or at least what we, me and my friends used to do. We want you to know that we're fasting. In fact, not only in Ramadan, but even outside of Ramadan, you know, uh, uh, the tradition is that Muhammad noticed that the Jews fast certain days. He said, well, you know, I am more worthy to fast them than the Jews themselves. So you start fasting Mondays and you start fasting Thursdays, you know, two days. And he says the Pharisees used to fast those. And I made an effort that everybody in the school knew I was fasting, you know, mm -hmm. to brag about it and to be, uh, uh, you know, receive accolades. And, and it's just interesting, you know, when in fact you shouldn't really let anyone know because it's between you and God. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying. Yeah. And I mean, you could I mean, you could just think about the most basic practices of Islam. It's like it's all, it's all a big it's all a big show. You know what I mean? It's like it's like your 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 shahada. They want that. They want you to they want you to be doing that. They want to bring you up on stage and stuff for that. Um, and you know, I can kind of get that idea. You want people to know, hey, I'm I'm actually a Muslim now. Uh, but everything, I mean, the prayers, ah, we we all get together and we all pray and we all line up and we, you know, we we do this as part of a spectacle and we have our fasting, we make sure the entire world knows, and we announce everything with we announce everything with trumpets. So that uh, so that people can follow. And, and it, what you just said about the Sermon on the Mount, um, that was uh, I, I just talked about this in a I mentioned this in a different live stream, I think, a couple days ago, where this was I believe this was our senior year in college. So N Nabil and I had been having discussions for several years by this point, and we were on a school trip and there was uh, I don't remember how we got on the the subject, but I said, there's something in the Sermon on the Mount about this. And what we weren't talking about this, we we're talking about something else in the Sermon on the Mount. 
And I read the pa I read part of the Sermon on the Mount to him, and he goes, "Wow, that's really cool." And I go, "Oh, let's read the whole thing." So we we started going through the Sermon on the Mount, and once we got to this, I mean, I was thinking in terms of uh, loving your enemies and so on. Like that's the message that I wanted him to to see, so that he could contrast that with Islam. So I was thinking in terms of chapter five. But he really liked it. We kept reading. And then when we got to chapter six, I wasn't even thinking about this. I wasn't even thinking, hey, I'm about to I'm about to really drop some drop some truth bombs on his religion. But we got and as soon as I started reading about the prayer, I was like, uh oh, he's going to think he's going to he's, he's going to have a problem with this. And sure enough, he jumped in. The, what, what, what are you saying? What, what, what's what's that mean? I was like, what do, do you mean? Is Jesus criticizing you right now for what you do? And uh, and that it was cool because that that actually led to a a discussion about uh, about all of this. But um, yeah, it's 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 so weird. It's like how in the name of common sense do you say you believe in Jesus when it's very clear that you do the exact opposite of what he's not not just in terms of you know loving your enemies. Uh, but on, on on your most basic religious practices is the most basic fundamental practices of your religion are the exact opposite of what of what Jesus taught his followers. So, I mean, it seems like it, if Muhammad didn't affirm Jesus, it seems like Muslims would be OK. You just say, oh, we don't care what Jesus said, but they're they're they're, they're not. They're stuck with they're stuck with claiming that they believe in Jesus while doing the exact opposite of what Jesus commanded. And they. In this case, they do it for an entire month of of feasting, patting themselves on the back for being so righteous, uh, drawing attention to themselves, and claiming that they're somehow following Jesus while doing the exact opposite. But again, as I pointed out, this they go further than this. They go further. Jesus is criticizing people who are actually fasting and want to be want it to be known that they're fasting. What Muslims are doing aren't fasting, according to Jesus, and they still want to be known as fasting. So it's we want all the praise for fasting without, with not only without actually doing the fasting, but with doing the opposite of the fasting, with uh, feasting the, for an entire month. That's so, I don't know, it's so interesting. It's, to me, it's, it's fascinating how you can actually have, you know, a billion plus people who are all convinced that they're doing this, this great fasting that no one, no other group in history would consider fasting. And yet they, they, they think it's fasting. It's weird. It's, inter it's interesting to me. Yeah, and, and of course, during the month of Ramadan, uh, the whole behavior changes for the majority, at least, of people of, uh, uh, you know, the followers of Muhammad in this case. Now, um, of course, the last 10 days of Ramadan are considered to be probably the most desired and sought after days to accumulate as many good deeds as possible, not to mention the night of power that is allegedly uh, happens during the, those 10 days, most probably the tw night of the 27th. That's when I was born, by the way. And um, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're promised that your sins will be forgiven and many, many benefits will happen and so on and so forth. Did you, by any chance, notice whether Nabil or other Muslims, you know, uh, that you uh, came across uh, have that change of behavior during the month of Ramadan attitude wise and also anything about the last 10 days that you've noticed as well? Um, Not. No, not not really. Not from not from personal um, interactions with Muslims. I wasn't. Uh, I just wasn't paying attention uh, th that much specifically to what was uh, what was going on. The, the Muslims, the Muslims I knew from from back in the day. Uh, the, the main thing I would notice is how 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 uh, how dedicated they were to being on time for breaking their fast once it was uh, um, once it was over. And uh, you know, I did. I did. That's back. That's back when I started to get the idea. When I started to get the idea that there looks, it looks like there's something horribly wrong with this religion. That it, it, it's. That's back then. That's when it started looking to me like. How do I put this? It's like if you wanted, if you wanted to make a religion for people who, by nature, are religious. but that wasn't actually bringing them to God. You'd want to give these people a bunch of things to take up their time, a bunch of rituals and so on, to take up their time and to build their life around. 
that aren't actually getting them any closer to God, but which make them think they're getting closer. Like these are the things that, that are getting us closer to God. This is the month when we're getting closer to God. And here's, you know, our daily schedule of all these things. If you wanted to keep people busy doing things that they think are for religion and giving them a kind of confidence that we are really, really devout. We are re we are the best of peoples, as the Quran says, Surah 3, verse 110, that we're the best of peoples because we're the ones who are doing all this. Notice, notice, if, if, you, were a, if you were a Muslim and you're doing your daily prayers and you're fasting and so on, if you saw a Christian who is actually obeying Jesus, you wouldn't know that that Christian is doing any fasting or or praying. You might see the Christian go to church and, and be praying there and so on. But if you're if you're around this Christian, the Christian is not going to be letting you know that he's praying. The Christian isn't going to be letting you know that he's fasting. He wouldn't be letting you know any of this stuff. But because you're doing it so publicly and it's all part of it, it's all part of the show, you'd be looking. So notice you'd be looking at this. Wow, look at this. I'm fasting and I'm praying and I don't see that Christian doing any of that. Why? Because the Christian, the Christian is trying to obey Jesus and say, hey, this is, you know, this is stuff between me and God. And I want to be careful. I want to be careful to make sure that I'm not doing this for show. So the Christian would be inclined, inclined to keep things as, as quiet as possible as to, as to what he's doing. And so the Muslim be looking and saying, hi, you see how righteous I am? I'm doing all this in public. And the Christian over there, I don't see the Christian doing any of this stuff. You see how these Christians are? Uh, and so it's just, it's just weird. It's like, it's like it was. It's like it's designed to give people this false confidence that they're doing something right with God, and yet it's it's still just there's a defect built into the system that you're you're still you're still claiming that you're following Jesus and all of this, and you're you're, you're obviously not. You're doing the exact opposite of what He commanded. Uh, not to mention, of course, if we want to look at the Quran from a chronological standpoint, it wasn't even instituted, even though it was one of the five pillars until later time. Uh, so the question is, so what happened to those Muslims who died before they knew that that was one of the pillars? And, you know, so there's a lot about the teaching itself that is obviously um, confusing. Uh, it does have some vague, uh, uh, you know, meaning behind this. Uh, when you read about the Sharia law interpretations of certain things and rulings, you get all kind of opinions as always. And then what David's saying, uh, you know, folks, especially to our Muslim friends, is that, you know, uh, you rely on your own ability to try to atone for your own sin by doing things like this. Ain't going to cut it. It's not going to work. You can fast all year long if you want. In fact, if you want real fasting, Jesus fasted for 40 days and uh, scripture indicates that he fasted without even eating. In fact, Satan offered him a feast and he refused, uh, you know, to have a feast. So it's all about the spiritual thing, the inner thing, more so than just the food and the eating. Um, so I'm not really so sure what, what is the benefit of fasting, yet at the same time, at nighttime, we're partying. You know, that's exactly how it was. You, you're holy during the day and partying at nighttime. And that was the cycle. You, you you just you just mentioned the prospect. Of, you said it, you know it wouldn't matter if you fasted an entire year. It's like, well, I mean, if you fasted Ramadan the way they fast Ramadan, you'd probably die within a year because you 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 become morbidly obese, and uh, it's just you can't like I, I, again. This people start having to work off all the weight they gain for Ramadan, and so yeah, if I mean, my goodness, if you. If you did this for a year, it's like you can't you can't do it. You can't you couldn't keep up with you couldn't keep up with that, not because you'd be starving yourself, but because you'd be. You'd eat you'd eat yourself to death. You would literally eat yourself to death if you tried to keep up Ramadan. It's weird, weird, uh, weird stuff. Again, just don't don't call it fasting. You wouldn't hear you wouldn't hear a peep out of me if you just stop calling it fasting. I hear you. Well, David, before we wrap it up, uh, why don't you let people know again about uh, your uh, main channel uh, uh, on YouTube right now? Uh, i got a few of them, but uh, I've been posting um, pretty regularly now on uh, Apologetics Roadshow. I'm about to, uh, I just recorded a video before we went live. I recorded a video on um, Psalm 14.1 and Psalm 53.1, which says the, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, very common to, for Christians to quote this about atheists, but pointing out that David wasn't actually talking about people who were, who were, who were actually 
uh, atheists in, in those passages. And so I have, actually have a discussion about what, uh, what, he's, what, what he's really saying in those passages. And, uh, and then for the beginning of Ramadan, I uh, should, uh, should have a fun video um, up for the beginning of Ramadan on, uh, I think it's Wednesday, right? Is that Wednesday? I believe it's Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, we're giving you bad ideas. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, oh, uh, oh, oh, and and side note for everyone who's watching, trust me on this. You're going to want to tune in to the Apostate Prophets channel on Saturday because this will, I predict, I predict, and you can don't call me a prophet because of this, but I predict that this is going to be on Saturday on AP's channel the greatest live stream in the history of forever. Cool. We need to bring him in next time. Uh, uh, you, me and him. And, um, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's have fun. Maybe, maybe during Ramadan, uh, we'll do something with him. Uh, also when we are in studio next time, hopefully he can join us as well, at least via zoom, uh, or maybe he can drive and come and join us in person if he can. Well, uh, what one quick comment? Black Angel said, uh, "Didn't David fast also for forty days? Didn't he drink water only?" No, I I once set out. This is before I was a Christian. I set out to fast forty two days because a Christian had done it. Randy Randy did that, so Randy fasted forty days. Um, he wasn't quite on water. He went thirty two days on nothing but water. So this is in jail. He went thirty two days on nothing but water, and then he. Uh, would have Kool-Aid because he was actually he's preparing his body to be able to receive food again. Because if you go a long time, all of a sudden you eat, you get messed up. I've had that. I've had that experience. So no, I never went. I never went forty days. Longest was uh, longest was twelve. I went twelve. But yes, that was nothing but that was nothing but water for that. Uh, unless he's talking about King David, so that's a whole different story, maybe. Oh wait, was she talking about no King David didn't. Did, when did King David? I, I don't. I remember him fasting for forty days. But uh, hey, you know, uh, I'll, I'll go and dig in again in uh, scripture. Maybe mm-hmm. I missed it. I think Moses did forty, and then another forty after that. Jesus did forty. Elijah fasted a long time. I don't remember how. Yeah, Elijah was just depressed in a cave, and he was there for forty days, indeed. And the angel of the Lord will bring to him the cup of cakes. You know, I would have loved to have my hand on those cakes, but. Uh, uh, that was that was feasting right there by Elijah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, do you see any other questions you want to uh, interact with? There's a, there's a lot of activities here, and yeah. uh, I, if uh, uh, you know if we miss something, we want to apologize, of course. And uh, moderators, if you see something important before we wrap it up, please let us know. Looks like there is uh, someone is saying everything David has said has been 100% ridiculously on point. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's it's it, it's a it's a simple takeaway, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, there are things part of your religion where you 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 can't you can't help but being seen. Jesus said that uh, a city on a hill cannot be hid, right? So, but as far as how you live your life, uh, don't be doing things to be seen. So, do things with a pure motive, not to be seen. And if some prophet comes along and says, hey, we've got all this public stuff that's going to make you seem really righteous to everyone around you. And we want to we want to we want to blast trumpets ahead of everything you're doing so that you look really, really, really good in front of everyone. That's a false prophet. Don't don't believe in him. Yes, sir. And according to the teaching of Moses in Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 to 18 and then 19 and 20, he should be killed. I mean, again, our Muslim friends go around all the time telling us that Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen is about Muhammad. I'm like, well, keep reading. That's yeah, the he, yeah, he would. You know, um, under under the Christian covenant, we don't have penalties like that. The harshest penalty was like excommunication, get out of the church. Um, but uh, yeah, during the time of Moses, Muhammad would have been executed for for multiple things that he did. And so it, it's it's this it's this notice it's the same thing. Uh, I'm in the same prophetic line with Jesus. Well, Jesus condemns the the most basic teachings of your religion. Jesus condemns the most basic fundamental practices of your religion. And we, you know, we're in the same line with with Moses. Well, Moses would have executed your prophet for things like the satanic verses and so on. So it's just a 
wow, Muhammad should have just said, hey, I've got some brand new religion. I've got a brand new religion. He really stuck his foot in his mouth by saying, oh, yeah, and it's connected to all these previous guys that I completely contradict. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking, and I don't know, David, if you ever had an experience like this or not. I, I, I do have an experience to share. Uh, some Christians, as part of evangelizing, uh, they end up joining Muslims by fasting with them. Mm -hmm. Did you ever come across any uh, who did something like that? Um, I, I mean, I I thought about that a couple of times. I, I didn't actually do it. But, uh, you know, I thought about, hey, should I actually you know, fast with Nabil. I mean, because I mean, keep in mind, from my perspective, that was like really easy fasting. <laughs> it was like incredibly easy, almost to the level of being completely insignificant uh, fasting, just so I could be hanging out with him more. And uh, I don't know, it's it's a it, it's 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 a tough call because I mean, if you're just if you're just saying, hey, I'm not going to eat during the day, there's no there's no harm in that. Uh, you just have to be you have to be careful about the the message that you're sending because Muslims will look at that like they're really impressing you with their religion and how it's really making an impact on you. And, oh, look, you know, this person's being drawn to Islam and so on. When from your perspective, you may be thinking, no, I just, you know, I want to I want to hang out with my Muslim friend more during this time and have more conversations. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't tell you're all your own people. I can't tell you one way or another. I can't think of anything that says, you know, one way or another, do this or don't do that. I would just say, be very, be very careful about the, the message you're conveying when you, when you do it. Yeah. I, I have an uh, experience with one person who was doing this also in an Islamic country and fainted because he wasn't really prepared. Uh, he wasn't feasting. And uh, uh, his Muslim colleagues actually told them, don't fast, we know you love us. So they got the message that he is really uh, doing this because he wants to uh, you know, be in solidarity with them. So sometimes it, it depends on the motive, like you said, you need to be careful not to send their own message. And they need to understand also why you're doing it. Uh, it's not like you're converting, but rather you're trying to show them the love of Christ. So it depends, uh, I guess that's the answer to that question depends on the situation, the motive, the location, and what type of message you're sending. Now, the other guy, uh, the guy that I just mentioned, they knew he's Christian. He's always witnessing to them. He's always inviting him to accept Christ. So, so they had no doubt that he is not really budging on his faith and moving away from that. Uh That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends on it, it is weird though to think of people like fainting. Because I mean, think I, I mean, if I go to like if I go to a buffet. Golden Corral or something like that, Chinese buffet. If I really load up, I don't need to eat any more that day. I'll I, I, I'll I'll just fill up. The idea of like imagine going to a buffet twice in a day, right? You just go there and then you load up and then you wait several hours and then load up again. I don't know. I can't imagine being like low energy after that, except for low energy because you're so stuffed. Like oh, I can't eat another bite. I just need to sleep. And uh, anyway, <laughs> it's so weird to me. Well, David, are you uh, planning any live streams uh, on your channel? Is there any activities, any things that are coming up soon that you want uh, the audience to be aware of or the uh, viewers, I should say? Uh, yeah, so uh, me and uh, AP, we've been going live on uh, on Saturdays on his channel and on Sundays on my channel talking about uh, various topics. We, we've had uh, we've been having some Muslims on to have discussions with us. Uh, we've been focusing on the friendly ones because, uh, you know, it gets old after a while, the endless the endless hostility and so on. And and uh, so it's good to have like discussions with some Muslims who are, you know, they're, they're not as, they're not as perpetually angry as, you know, some of the, some of the Dawah guys. So um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, basically every, every, every weekend, unless we're traveling or something like this, or unless something goes horribly wrong, uh, we're usually live streaming Saturday and Sunday nights. That's wonderful. Again, thank you, uh, brother, for uh, taking the time to be here. And I'm really uh, looking forward to having you in the studios as well. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm praying that your schedule permits you to, for us to do this, uh, you know, uh, more often. Uh, I am uh, regaining my energy now and I'm trying to slowly and gradually come back into the world of live streaming. Mm hmm. But as always, uh, what a blessing to have you. And I'm sure everybody uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, 
seeing you here and also uh, realizing that you are uh, going live or you're doing some videos already on your own new channel. Again, it's called Apologetic Roadshow. And uh, I know you mentioned uh, you have at least one, maybe even two other channels, but uh, I'm sure people will start getting a wind of that once it, uh, the activities in those channels as well increases. Yeah, they can find it. All right, my brother. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you to our moderators. And uh, to those of you who will be watching this special our Muslim Friends, please uh, uh, don't, um, you know, uh, curse the messengers. Don't, don't kill the messenger. Just watch the video and see that we mean well. We do not really mean anything negative. We want you to begin to ask yourself, what's the value in fasting half the day and feasting the other half? what exactly is the value behind this in fact i used to be told that we fast ramadan to remember the poor really i mean you want to wait um, no, no. Um, this helps me remember the poor um, no. No kidding. I, waiting a whole year to remember the poor why why don't i remember the poor all the time i mean what's what's the difference here so and, and and then i i i just i just uh uh, I don't know if I can find it real quick I ju because I just read it. But uh, one of the one of the problems was um, it's not only food sales that spike during Ramadan; it's food waste. In other words, food just being thrown away because they're you know they're making these huge. It's like Thanksgiving. You might make a you might make a big pile of. So, so think about it. For Thanksgiving, you make a turkey and you make this big pile of food, and everyone eats it. But then you put the you know you put the leftovers in the refrigerator, and for Ramadan, you can't just put leftovers in the refrigerator because you're gonna you're gonna be doing the same thing the next day. So they just end up throwing out tons and tons of food, and it's a it's an ongoing problem. Like, what? Wait, if you're remembering the poor, how are you throwing out uh, more food than than any other month? In other words, it's a, it's not only the biggest month for food consumption; it's the biggest month for food waste in Islam. And as you just pointed out, very very important very important takeaway that. When when lots of Muslims watch what we just talked about right there, it would be like anger at us. Oh, how dare you criticize our religious practices when we're, we're, we're not we're not hostile towards you. We're trying to we're trying to tell you to help you. We're trying to we're trying to tell you what Jesus said. You claim to respect Jesus. We're telling you what Jesus said about your religious practices so that you stop thinking that 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 doing all these things for show somehow gets you gets you in good with the almighty it it doesn't we're doing this out of love not out of not out of hatred or or anger so stop interpreting every criticism of hypocritical religious practices as you know a a as some sort of uh, sign that we hate you if 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 i if I absolutely despised you and hated you, I wouldn't tell you a word. I wouldn't say a word of this to you. I would let you go on for the rest of your life, shoving food in your face and bragging about being, you know, super, super righteous when you're doing it. Amen, brother. Amen. Well said. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi uh, over and out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this show and God bless you. Take care.